For the past 6 weeks I have been testing and comparing two CGM sensors, Freestyle Libre 2 and LibreSense Biosensor. And in this video I'm gonna share with you what I found out and which one I like better and why. So scan your sensors and let's go! Hey, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Tom, I've been type 1 diabetic for over 30 years and on this channel I help you navigate your diabetes journey. So let's get right into it and talk about these two bad boys. Just keep in mind, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a medical professional, this is not medical advice. I'm just testing these devices and sharing my experiences. Now you should know that Libre 2 is designed and approved for diabetics, but Libre Sense is not approved for medical use. It's only approved for athletes. But they both look the same and in principle they are exactly the same thing continuous glucose monitors. And by the way, LibreSense uses the Freestyle Libre continuous glucose monitoring technology. So it kind of makes sense that they do the same thing. But let's talk about what the difference between these two is and which one I like better, shall we? The first difference, and this is a big one, is data transmission and scanning. You know, LibreSense is a true ICGM, so it feeds the data from your sensor on your arm to an app on your phone. You don't have to do anything. The app on the phone updates every 60 seconds depending on the data received from the sensor and you see the graph practically real time all the time. Now Libre 2 sensor doesn't do that because the Libre 2 sensor will read the blood glucose data but it will not send it anywhere. You will only see the data once you've initiated a scan with the Freestyle Libre link app on your phone or with your Freestyle Libre reader. And it's so easy to get used to the not scanning part with Libre Sense. This is what I really loved and really enjoyed. And it's kind of difficult to go back to scanning. So the first point in this contest goes to Libre Sense. And by the way, if you are impatiently waiting for Libre 3 just like me, then you should know that Libre 3 you will not need to scan either. The second difference between these two is alarms. And you probably know that on Libre 2 you can get alarms when you are running too low or too high. And for me, alarms are a fantastic feature. It's like a little warning that soon something might go wrong and that I need to act. I need to take a little snack or I need to take a little insulin shot. And as Abbott says, alarm, scan, act. I think the act part of it is really what makes the difference. If you act timely, then you stay in the range more time. Now Libre Sense doesn't have alarms and it kind of makes sense that Libre Sense doesn't have alarms because non-diabetic people don't need alarms, right? It makes sense. And when I was using LibreSense, I really had to check the app a lot to see what my blood sugar is and whether it's not going too high or too low. So it kind of reminded me of the back in the days when I had to use Freestyle Libre 1 that also didn't have alarms. So this is a clear point for Libre 2 for alarms. The third difference between these two is the range in which they work. So Libre 2 has very wide range. Unless you are extremely high or extremely low, it will always show you the number and the trend. So it's very good for diabetics. Now Libre Sense only works in a range between 55 to 200 milligrams per deciliter, which is like 3 to 11 millimoles. And so this is a narrow range, which is something you might want to consider. Now if you're a diabetic and have your diabetes under control, then you could think that the range from 55 to 200 is wide enough. And I was thinking the same thing, because 99% of the time I am within this range from 55 to 200. And overall it was okay, I was doing just fine with Libre Sense for a few days. But after a few days my blood glucose went above 200. And then I realized I'm suddenly in the dark. I don't know what the value is and I don't know what the trend is. So I just know I'm above 200. So what do I do? Yeah, I made a small correction, I took some insulin and I wait 30 minutes, 60 minutes, 90 minutes and I'm still checking the app. But I'm still above 200 and I have no idea, am I still going up? Am I now going down? I'm completely in the dark. And this is so frustrating because at the end you have to pull a glucometer, you have to check your actual blood sugar, you see you are above 200, but you still don't know where you are heading. So I think this is a big disadvantage, you know, having the trend with Freestyle Libre 2, you don't realize how important and how valuable the trend indication is which you don't get when you get outside of the range on LibreSense. I feel like they must have put the limited range on LibreSense on purpose so that diabetics don't use it. What a bummer. So this is a clear point for Libre2. The fourth difference between these two bad boys 
is the app and this is where it gets personal. For me the design of LibreLink app that you use with Libre2 is average and maybe slightly below average. I mean don't get me wrong it has a lot of extremely helpful functions but it just looks very old school and I don't enjoy using it as much as the Super Sapiens app. By the way I do a step-by-step -step walkthrough of the LibreLink app in another video and I will link it here and in the show notes so that you can check it out. Now the Super Sapiens app is totally different. It has black background and lots of colorful animations and statistics and I really enjoyed playing with this app. You can track all your meals, exercise, sleep, stress and a lot of other things on a much more detailed level. And the app will analyze the data for you and shows you all kinds of really nice overviews, which the LibreLink app doesn't do. So this is a clear point for LibreSense. Now the fifth and probably most important difference for me between Libre2 and LibreSense was the reliability and accuracy. And to be honest, the LibreSense biosensors are tried were not 100% reliable. The first one was just fine, but the second one stopped working right after the first day. So I couldn't use it, I just used it for one day and suddenly it stopped working. So I had to ask for a replacement. Now the third one was actually showing me quite low readings, so it was not very accurate. It was showing me a lot of times below 55, but I was actually feeling fine and I was around 90 or 100, so not very accurate. And I know it's taking readings from interstitial fluid and not from blood and it cannot be compared one to one to glucometer, but still this kind of difference is too high for me. Now with Libre2 I have had so much better experience with both accuracy and reliability. I have used it for over a year now and I did not have a single one faulty sensor. And also in terms of accuracy, I had very accurate readings from Libre2 and for me it was better than Libre1, maybe I was just lucky. But in terms of accuracy, durability and overall reliability, Libre2 definitely beats LibreSense. Now as I said at the beginning, both of the sensors should be using the same Freestyle Libre Continuous Glucose Monitoring technology. So when it comes to durability and uh, accuracy, I'm just surprised I saw such significant differences. And, and please take it with a grain of salt because I had a very small sample of sensors, you know, based on these three sensors, LibreSense that I use, I cannot make big conclusions. I'm just sharing my personal experience and it might be totally different in your case. Now, if you use Libre2 or LibreSense, let me know in the comments below how you like it. I would love to hear from you. Now, a little disclaimer, LibreSense is only approved for a non-diabetic use. So if you are diabetic and decide to use LibreSense, you should be very careful. And now you should definitely click on one of my videos on the screen to learn more about blood sugar management and CGM technology. Thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next Type 1 Talks video. Ciao!